another episode of TTM Chat. We've got an amazing TTM composer in the house, the turntablist composer. And um, we've got, so his name's Tom Dent, and he goes by DJ Checkers. So, so Tom, tell us about your background as far as, as musical composition. Like, when did you start playing? Uh, yeah. yeah, well, thanks for having me, Ray. It's, uh, it was great to chat the other day. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I guess it all started with guitar when I was seven or eight, kind of standard. Um, and, yeah, it was classical guitar, it was jazz guitar, it was kind of rock and roll. Um, definitely wanted to be a rock star when I, was, when I first started. And yeah, that kind of just developed a bit of a passion for music, really. I've always found that, um, you know, I've had a real connection kind of emotionally with music. It's always evoked quite a lot um, of emotion in me. And there's always kind of, um, that's always been a very appealing, appealing thing. You know, it's, it's, it's made it quite a big and special thing in my life, regardless of what form it is, you know, whether it's DJing or, or composing or guitar or whatever. Um, and so I just kind of followed it, really, um, followed it through college and to university and uh, studied it. And I did a master's in composition as well. So I was composing um, real kind of weird and wonderful kind of contemporary music at this point. So nice. I loved um, opera, um, kind of contemporary opera. So it was, um, it was all about kind of telling stories, I guess. I love this, this idea of... Um, yeah, telling stories through music was always kind of the focus of my composition. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it was, a, it, was, it, was, it was a really good, really good year, kind of writing for ensembles and, and for orchestra as well, and doing some, some solo pieces. Nice. Um, so before we talk about TTM composition, um, we, can, we can backtrack a little bit. Um, what were some of your, your influences as far as uh, music? Um, I usually ask people that on the show, you know, because you're coming from the UK. And you know, we're talking about rock and guitar, and you know, uh, you know, there's Wall of Sound, and you know, so I mean, like, were you into Pink Floyd, or like, what kind of things were you? What kind um, of I, I mean, it's it's developed so much. I've gone in so many different directions, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, when I started out, Santana was was always, oh, okay. but um, you know, right now, um, I've gone I've gone from that. I've gone through you know, contemporary classical stuff, and and now it's all about the kind of deep depths of techno and <laughs> it's been quite a kind of a uh, world world journey with my kind of taste in music but um i kind of feel this important Spanish you know too, like with the long fingernail stuff or yeah yeah absolutely yeah um i used to actually have fake fingernails most of the time ah, just because yeah. they kept breaking so was... <laughs> uh -huh. oh yeah yeah exactly wow that's cool so yeah i'm just curious but you know because when i was a kid um when i was about in like maybe six you know, i think i was in maybe sixth or seventh grade, um, um, they just put a bunch of instruments in the middle of the room and they were like, hey, hey kids, you know, um, pick, choose your instrument. And all the boys ran to the drums and I wanted to be a drummer. And then they were like, no, we got too many drummers. So <laughs> they were like, okay, well, pick some other instruments. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go to the trombone. And so now I played tr trombone through high school. I'm wondering, mm -hmm. uh, as far as the UK, um, you know, because in the US, they kind of give us recorders until we get a little bit older. What age mm -hmm. do they give kids um, instruments, you know, as far as, uh, you know, not just like a standard instrument? And do they use the recorder in the UK? Yeah, no, um, recorder is definitely the starting point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think recorders, um, recorder and ukulele are kind of one of the... Um, oh, cool. Um, the kind of main instruments that kids are introduced with in school. Oh, wow, cool. Um, and then and what then, age do they get to have, like, the regular instruments? Well, it kind of is it's quite a different system here because, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you learn an instrument, it's quite often something you do outside of school. Oh, okay. So you're not given instruments in quite the same way, I think, maybe that you are in, um, um, in America. I think some schools certainly do, but... Um, well, I was in private school, so this was in public schools. Like oh, my whole life right. was private school, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that might be the same case here, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, no, definitely started on recorder, and then um, I think I was fairly set on the idea of, of guitar when you know the time came. Um, uh -huh. I can't I can't remember where it came from, but yeah, no, I definitely went for the guitar. Cool, cool. Um, yeah. So and um, yeah, and I'm curious too. Like, so you're talking about like. Carlos Santana and stuff like that. Um, what about, did you ever get into, uh, 
into other things like sitars or basses or, or any other types of strings or you just stayed purely guitar? Uh, that's true. I was, yeah, purely guitar. I mean, I had, um, so classical acoustic and, and electric jazz, I guess, were the oh, kind yeah, of three cool. variations. Cool. Yeah, that I really enjoyed. Cool. I mean, and um, what about actually, pedals and just, what about pedals and distortion and yeah, and yeah, um, so. actually, yeah. um, I'm getting a few of my old guitar pedals up because I to plug into my mixer just to play around with. Um, so <laughs> asking my parents to dig around in the loft to uh, send those up to me. Um, cool. But yeah, so yeah, um, loved kind of um, yeah distortion. Uh, I loved my kind of my, my jazz amp, um, old hot rod. Absolutely love that kind of sound. Um, but yeah, I mean acoustic too. I mean the kind of kind of Pat Metheny kind of acoustic jazz guitar. That's, I adore that. What do you do? Um, but I mean, it's it's always one of those things. I mean, I'm just looking at my guitars in their cases here. It's it's been a while since I've got them out, but um, I guess yeah. Nice, nice. So so we're you were talking about composition and uh, you're you're um, talking about collegiate composition and mm -hmm. uh, opera and stuff like that. And then so tell us how you got into uh, composing uh, TTM works. Well, so um, so that comes from my work with a company called Future DJs. So I'm, I'm general manager of a company called Future DJs, and we teach DJing and music production skills in schools around the UK. Um, obviously, at the moment. With schools not not being in due to the um, right. the pandemic, um, th I mean, thankfully we had um, a bit of a um, lifesaver up our sleeves. We were developing a kind of virtual a virtual classroom, oh. um, so that's that's launching this month properly, and we've been teaching kids virtually um, while they haven't been in school. So that's been good. Um, but what you know what we're doing is you know we're introducing DJing into schools in the same way that you know they're introduced to other instruments and just making it an option for them, um, and I guess, you know, what we've kind of realized is it's, it's a really powerful option. Um, DJing has this kind of wonderful thing of breaking down all kinds of barriers that children might find when they first approach music, you know. Mm. Uh, maybe they don't want to play the trombone or, you know, they don't relate to playing the violin. Exactly. Uh, whatever community you're in, you know, you, there's a DJ in every community. And yeah, that's, that's, that's a fantastic yeah. thing. I actually quit playing the trombone in uh, in the middle of high school because I was just getting into music and stuff like that, and I quit the jazz band and um and then I was just kind of just making beats and and you know DJing and stuff like that. I had kind of quit the trombone like maybe when I was like maybe fifteen or maybe mm. not sixteen, fifteen or sixteen. And uh, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. So and uh, the the name of your the the DJ crew again that's teaching. Um, so the company's called Future DJs. Future, Future DJs. DJs, that's great. That's yeah. great. So we have... Um, so how long have, have you all been teaching uh, um, DJing? And then how long have you all been teaching uh, TTM within the curriculum? Sure. So um, the company's been going a few years. It all started, um, actually, I think back in kind of 2016, mm -hmm. um, when some of the exam boards that do kind of school um, exams introduced DJing onto the curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, so suddenly there was, you know, teachers and students who um, could study, could use DJing for their, for their music exam, but um, didn't know how to teach it. So um, Future DJs was kind of created at the back of that. The, the founders, um, Scott and Austin Smart, um, saw the gap there and started teaching at their old um, secondary school. And then it all kind of came from there. Um, so yeah, and this, this is kind of developed, um, developed now um, a few years later. And, um, we're in schools all over the country and we have so we have tutors that are local to the schools that go in um, when schools are open they, they go in and teach once a week so they teach solo or pairs of students and nice. um, uh, to DJ and so um, so yeah what we did was um, we developed a course and the key was always kind of connecting students or yeah. connecting what students love about music you know because you know Virtually every student on the planet can relate to some kind of some kind of music and some kind of musical exactly. style. Have a have a passion for one artist or another, um, but you know that, that doesn't relate or that doesn't um, turn into lots of students taking music as a as a subject. It's really kind of suffering at the moment in the UK. Mm, um, yeah, no, especially I mean the figures um, it's, it's decreased by I think twenty percent in the last five yeah. years, mm. um, which is a real shame. And you know. And part of the kind of 
passion that we carry through into all this is just the realization of what a powerful and amazing subject music can be. You know, totally. um, equip students with just the most um, versatile skills and just all kinds of areas, whether it's kind of um, emotional skills, you know, being able to express yourself emotionally through music, or it's you know the dexterity you get from an instrument, or um, learning how to analyze, learning how to read a language, like all of these things you get from just one subject, and it's just so so sad um, in many ways to to see you know decreasing numbers being being taken in schools. So anyway, so we ended up with so DJing has been introduced, and we're like fantastic. Like, this is like it's a bit of a savior in many ways because mm -hmm. you know, one of the reasons that perhaps kids aren't taking music is because they can't relate to the kind of music that's being taught. Exactly. So, but with DJing, you know, you can bridge that gap. It's fantastic. You can be like, right, you know, you love grime, sweet. Let's use some grime and let's teach you some stuff nice. that you're learning in school. So you let kids bring in records? Do they bring, get to bring this or you guys choose? So they can bring in whatever they like on, on the USB stick. Uh, we, okay. Unfortunately, so, so what we do is um, we provide the school with, um, it's like an, an all-in-one Pioneer controller. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be awesome if we could give schools turntables. But, uh, <laughs> um, That's great. I mean, no, I think it's, I think it's better to, uh, I mean, it's great to have vinyl, but it's just so expensive. And, you know, and then practical wise, if you're teaching kids, just like how you're saying, for them to be able to bring in tunes and stuff like that, it's a lot easier to just be able to use, you know, digital tables. I, I mm -hmm. think it's a good thing. Um, yeah. That's very interesting. Because um, are you feeling familiar with the, uh, the the program that's going at the uh, Leicester Shire schools? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, heard about it when it was um, set up. Um, which, yeah, it sounds fantastic. So that's a great example of, um, so a music service, um, kind of also recognizing that DJing can be such a brilliant thing, and that was that was in a primary school. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and and the cool thing about that, um, they're they're using vinyl, but they're the one thing um, is is that they're not. I don't think they're really using crossfaders yet. I think it's like mm -hmm. a preliminary kind of intro course where yeah. they're just kind of focusing on open fader stuff and they're doing mm -hmm. open composition and stuff too. So tell me about the the composition that's um, the compositions that are used in the class, and we'll talk about the right. book as well. But sure. first, um, we need to talk about the class. Like, what kind of what what, what kind of uh, notation is being used in the class? And... Sure. Um, well, I guess um, yeah. How we how we kind of kind of the story of how we ended up chatting was um, mm -hmm. because what we've had the opportunity to do, and um, I don't know. I the system in the UK I think is quite different from the US, but um, you kind of learn um, music in, in school as a subject, but you can also do these graded exams out, outside of school. Mm -hmm. um, and so it would usually be from grade one to, to grade eight, and grade eight would kind of be the benchmark of being, you know, a professional, being able to go on to become a professional. Mm -hmm. um, grade one is, is where you would start. And, you know, they have, you have grades in, in every single instrument, um, but it's never been done with DJing before. Um, so... Yeah, so you know, I hear that everybody, everybody that's very, very major. Yeah. They're, they've created the first, uh, it's, it's three tiers or four tiers? So we did three tiers. So okay. um, and tiers of, of, of uh, basically finals for, for, uh, for DJ students. So, you know, yeah. so, so at the end of the, the course, they have to pass that or, it's, or the tiers are within the course. Like how to, or or it's, it takes like a number of years for them to get to the next tier. Like how does that? Um, so, I mean, the teacher will just kind of progress the students at, at their own pace, really. Um, and then when they're ready for, for the exam, um, they can book a place and then go to an examination centre and, and take the exam. So it's, it's a live exam with an examiner. Um, and yeah, part of that exam um, is, of course, scratching and, and beat juggling techniques. Mm -hmm. And um, the perfect way to communicate that was, of course, DTM. So Mm -hmm. um that's kind of how how this how this came to be um and so we worked closely with mr switch tony um he's been brilliant the four times dmc world champion yeah he's um, yeah he's fantastic and um he's got a very, really really good educational mind as well he's, he's been fantastic coming up with these with these patterns um and so we kind of worked out you know what techniques go where what constitutes kind of the beginner patterns and the intermediate patterns and, and the higher patterns and uh yeah wrote out these 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 ttm patterns which um i presented to you the other day yeah so that's great he worked with you so is there any way uh do you have those on your desktop now can you pull those up uh so yeah do you see there's there should be a function where you can share screen there should be like a share screen function 
So you should be able to share a screen. If you can't, then maybe I can see if I can do it. Yeah, I'm sure I can. Let's see. Yeah, they have some like kind of complex share screen kind of uh, setups. Okay. Um, it's on my phone, so this might be a bit difficult. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if this I can do it on my phone, unfortunately. Yeah, let me see. Maybe I can pull them up then. So I'm going to open I think up. Uh, I don't have them. Uh, I didn't prepare for it. I didn't have them ready. But I'll load them up now. And we can, you know, talk about something else while it's loading. Sure. Should I send them to you again? Uh, let's see. Uh, no, I, I have them. I just uh, I have to go into Facebook to pull it up. So let me go to Facebook because I was using another computer, but that computer crashes all the time. Yeah. So and and uh, tell me about um, your in uh, your collaborations with with uh, Mr. Switch. Um, um, so you guys work together on the composition or he just kind of like double check things for you or? I don't know. He, so he, um, he very much wrote them. So he, he's the uh, he's the composer here. Um, oh, sure. okay. uh, um, so we kind of so me and an, another DJ called DJ Mark One. Um, we kind of wrote the curriculum and, and came up with um, kind of which techniques should go where and, and which techniques should be in each pattern. Um, and then Tony took that and uh, came up with the patterns. So um, yeah, all, all credit to Tony. Uh, very cool. That, that's very cool. So um, and uh, with the the compositions, um, um, uh, he came up with the patterns. But you know what? Uh, I'm just curious, like how you guys designed it. Like, did you guys use pencil? Was it just um, so? Yeah. So he he drew them out in pencil, and then. Um, I created this this grid in, in just pages, um, mm -hmm. and then just started drawing out lines. It took a while. <laughs> nice. I got that. So you did. Um, the, he did the first version of it, and like you revised stuff, or you, or you just yeah, exactly. It? Um, there's you know there's a bit of back and forth. We've been oh, kind cool. of um, discussing these over the last few weeks, just trying to um, make sure that each skill is covered to the right kind of standard, uh -huh. and sure well, that the that they were also kind of interesting, interesting patterns that are kind of memorable and there's a good flow to them. That was always um, what we were trying to achieve. Um, nice. So nice. yeah, so Tony, Tony um, just yeah wrote them out by hand and then I uh, turned it into uh, what you've got in front of you. Cool. So you revised them, like you guys went through a back and forth process of. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah. Nice. Um, so yeah, let's see if we can pull these up. Uh, yeah, this thing still hasn't loaded yet. Facebook is going very slow. Um, so yeah, let's talk about something else while it's still loading. Um, yeah, so that's really, really cool. Um, and uh, how many students have gone through the, uh, the process? The, um, this particular curriculum, would you say, give or take? Well, I mean, the exams have, um, haven't been launched yet. Um, oh, okay. We've just kind of written these patterns. Um, mm -hmm. So it's due to be launched kind of very, very soon. Um, this cool. month or, or next. So, so, so before um, that, so it expects. Yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah. before that, was TTM being used in the class before the exams? Um, in some examples, yeah. Um, we used it for our our book, of course. Um, cool. um, yeah, and if you could show us the book, yeah, if you could pull out the book while I'm loading this up, that'd be great. Um, great. So tell us about the book. So that's. Uh, Sure. So um, this was co-written by me and the co-founders of the company, so Scott and Austin Smart. Mm -hmm. um, and this has been a few years in, in development, actually. It's, um, it's how I first came to, to meet the company, because um, I was an editor at a music publisher. Um, uh -huh. And we met each other at a, uh, um, an exhibition. And um, yeah, from, from then we started working on this book together. And uh, it was published earlier this year. So, um, nice. Um, and so we did some uh, TTM exercises um, for this book as well. A kind of simplified version of TTM. It's just for well, can, you, can you put that on the screen again? Oh, can you put that on the screen? Yeah, so everybody can see it. Now, can you explain what uh, these are like from the um, from the beginning, or maybe a little bit farther back? Well, I guess if you go too far back, we can't see it really. Um, yeah, that angle's good. Yeah, I can see it now. Yeah. Very cool. So I see. Um, nice, nice. Very cool. So these got some like some basic modulation um, going on over there. 
Yes, there's basic baby scraps. So, so what are these? Uh, what are these for? Is this for a specific level? Is that what? What kind of? Uh, well, so that? so the book is, is just a kind of DJing textbook. So it covers all bases really, kind of mixing yeah. techniques, uh -huh. scratching, beat juggling, um, the luck. Um, and so yeah, we, we kind of explained how to to do the kind of standard um, scratching techniques, and then gave some exercises in TTM for people to practice um, as well. Nice. Yeah, it's funny. Um, Facebook's not showing me my uh, messenger section, so maybe can you send me those those PDFs again? Yeah, no problem. For the tests. Yeah, because I'm not. It's just it's just totally blank for me right now. Let me click on Messenger and see hey, yeah. if uh, it'll pop up. Okay, cool. You see, I got the attachment. Let's see, but Messenger seems to be loading up right now. Very cool. And how long has the book been out? So since January. So, so not, not nice. too long. It came out. Wow. I didn't know that. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it kind of, you know, it kind of embodies our, our philosophy as a company, I guess. We're very, uh -huh. um, very inclusive of all styles of DJing and all, and all cultures and communities and genres. It's always kind of something that we press home again and again um, to our teachers and to our students that, you know, really we want them to appreciate and understand kind of every aspect of the DJing world because it's, it's so big you know there's so many um different sides to it um exactly. and you know, the co-founders co of the company were kind of house and techno DJs um and that was very much their background um but we've kind of we've absorbed the scratching and the beat juggling techniques and made sure that you know every, every DJ kind of has a has a place um in our course Nice, nice. Yeah, because the cool thing about, you know, the the turntable is that it's just got, you know, kind of infinite range in a sense, you know, mm. um, giving us like, hey, if you want to scratch piano sounds, if you want to scratch, you know, different sounds. And I think we were talking about it last time, um, the fact that I'm really into kind of like classical, at this point in my life, you know, five years from now, I might be scratching a lot of other sounds, but Mm -hmm. past kind of like five years I've kind of been focusing on kind of the traditional like odd and fresh sounds mm -hmm. because I, you know for me it's kind of like what Kubert was saying when he said that like um you know the, the odd and the fresh are kind of like the, the the grand piano sound for the piano or a classical guitar sound with no effects or no distortion mm -hmm. pedals for for guitar and being able to judge someone's skill in those um you know classical things uh i mean those those classical sounds that you know people pioneered within the 80s and you know what's also interesting is that you know i've scratched a lot of sounds and ah it's still my favorite sound i'm fresh because i think that there's something different about them than most sounds most sounds weren't run through a vocoder you know those mm. sounds are actually a vocoded sound that had already been processed and then mm. you know, everybody started scratching it. Whereas most sounds are a lot of times are kind of like raw, pure sound appeared in the song, like mm. intended to be trippy or anything like that. But I noticed that kind of like harsh atonal noises or like even like a shh or a sh or you know, a kind of a white noise, kind of staticky kind of sounds mm. kind of, um, lend themselves better to kind of uh, precise cuts and you know because it's like if you're, say you're cutting a bass line it's so the bass is so deep that when, if you start cutting slow and doing some scratch that's really slow you're not even going to hear it you know mm. because it's like you mm. might be dropping it five octaves down if you're going super super slow I and mean, it's like you're not even going to hear the actual sound that you're cutting or if it's a sound yeah, yeah, yeah. mixed with different things where some bass and something else in it and something else you might the bass might disappear because you're going slow and then the other parts you might hear it and you know it can be you know the cool thing about the on fresh is that it's very consistent and it's very clear and, and mm -hmm. you know that's that's why i've uh been focusing on it um and so what kind of sounds are are the kids using in the the classes so i mean for the for the exams we started so the, the first level is it's just our um like uh, you said oh it's, great it's great that's great uh-huh yeah and it it uh yeah, it has all the components to just be able to um, practice the techniques without having to, to worry, I guess, about the complexities of the sample as well. It, it's because um, that is, you know, it's an additional level of difficulty, really, kind of dealing uh -huh. with multiple bits or, you know, um, other things. So, yeah, we started with just R and then the next level, um, R and Fresh. Um, and then the highest level, um, we've got R Year as well. Um, nice, so, nice. 
some of that too. All right, so let's see. Yeah, so it's not showing me the older chat. So now I'm going to have to go into, uh, let me just go to uh, um, Gmail because the Facebook, because you sent me them on Facebook and I went, you know, we have so many new messages, it didn't pop up. So yeah, so that's, that's really cool. And then what about the next level? So the, the first level they're using, ah, then what's ha happening after that? Like, do they? So the second ones are in fresh. Mm -hmm. um, and then the thirds are fresh and are oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Cool, cool. Very, very cool. And um, so uh, about how many students, again, I can't remember. If, I know I asked you that before, but how many students would you say, give or take, have gone through the program? Um, so students that are being taught now, um, so it's roughly 600, I think. Nice. Um, nice. But this... Um, That's this semester, 600 this semester or just in general? So, um, well, let's say the exams haven't been launched yet, so this is kind of um, they're just about to be launched and we would expect the first children to be taking the exams around Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, but we have about 600 students that we teach in schools at the moment. Nice, nice. That's cool. That's cool. And that's so we hope, we, we hope that they all, they'll all go on to uh, take the exams. Um, that would be awesome. Yeah, that's really, really cool. You guys are doing a really, really cool thing. And have you all ever collaborated with the Leicester Shire schools or that's just something totally different? Uh, no, no, we haven't actually. But um, yeah, I'll, um, I'll I'll get in touch. We've never actually. Yeah, yeah, you should get in touch with us. But um, and uh, so uh, another question I have is is that uh, with the uh, with the program, um, are the students uh, are any of them also you know DJs outside of the the class or anything like that? Because I think I started DJing mm -hmm. in like maybe ninety. I was like maybe. 13, 14, I was like, I was a freshman, so I was probably like 14, like 93, maybe. I think I started DJ 94. Um, nice. So I'm wondering- We've got a great, we've got a great, a great story actually. So we had, um, so one of our students from a school in Liverpool mm -hmm. called Sandro. He's one of our first ever students um, when the company first started. Uh -huh. And um, we, we got him, um, it's an amazing opportunity last year. So he played on the main stage of the Amsterdam Open Air Festival um, last summer, um, which is fantastic. Quite, um, he kind of opened the main stage for the, for the festival. Wow, that's nice. Which is awesome. And he was, so he was 13. Um, wow, that's great. That's great. Um, great. There's, a great um, there's a great mini documentary on it, actually. I'll, I'll send you the link um, you can watch it. It was, yeah, quite a special moment. That's very, very cool. So yeah, you just sent me the link. I'm not seeing it. Did you, can you see if it sent? Cause I don't see the link here. I just, um, uh, so I sent you the three um, PDFs again mm -hmm. in Facebook. Um, oh, in Facebook again. I thought you sent them in. Uh, oh, so let me go back to Messenger. I have Messenger open still. Yeah, so let's see, let's pull this first one up. Oh, okay, I see them. Okay, great. There we go. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, so let me do the level one. So level one is uh, debut. Correct, yeah. Okay. All right, so I'm opening this debut. And let me see if I can figure out how to. So this is my first time using Zoom. So uh, pardon me if this is just taking a little bit, um, taking a little bit long to all the viewers. This is my first time, but you know, we're going to be doing Zoom a lot in the future. It's a really good setup. All right, here we go. I see the PDF is right here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, switch it so we can see the actual, uh, this pattern and we'll talk about it. Very cool, so let me see. So let's switch this, let's see. Here, screen, this screen right here. There we go, share. See how this works. So I should turn my screen off, I think. Let's see, we should be able to, cool. So you can see the screen now? Uh, it's thinking about it. Oh, it hasn't popped up yet. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're in. Okay, so now you can see it. You can see the whole thing? Yeah, I've, yeah, I've got it in front of me, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Um, Great, that's great. You can see the whole thing. So this first one, can you see my, uh, can you see my, um, my little mouse? Can you see the movie? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. great. So, so and, and is can you see all the stuff on the screen or wait, let me roll this, scroll this up some so it's a little bit less obscured. Um, I'm gonna... uh, I can see the first three patterns. Okay, so yeah, let me 
open this bottom part up so we can go down to the bottom. Oh, maybe I'll zoom out a little bit. Let me see if I can um, zoom out. Let's see. There we go. All right, cool. There we go. We got all four. All right, great. So, so you can see all four. Yep. yep. In my view, your window is covering up some of them, but you can still see them. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Awesome. All right, great. So, so yeah, these first two, let's talk about this first bar. It's very, very cool. Um, so this is level one. All right. So, so to all the viewers, this is like for a final exam for uh, schools in, in, uh, in the UK. This is very, very cool. Um, so this, yeah, this first one we have here, um, we can see, yeah, we got like a two baby scratches or rub scratches you know, invented by a grand wizard, Theodore. And I uh, see so you have them at uh, two different heights, which is a great practice because, you know, um, a lot of DJs can only pretty scratch like in a, in a kind of monotone way where they're not really thinking about pitch. It's definitely good to get kids thinking about pitch early. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so um, very, very cool. And I see you've got, um, you know, each of these this baby scratches going for like a quarter note, then a, 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 another one that's basically, uh, the, the, um, a lower pitch, you know, twice as, uh, twice as low, like, you know, one octave down. And then another one, and then another one. It's very, very cool. And these fast little scribbles. And that's cool that you got the pullback. Nice. Very, very cool. And then I guess we were talking about um, uh, the clicking and stuff like that. You had some questions yesterday about um, the difference between um, uh, basically like a general cut like this versus um, something like this where you're pushing forward. And mm. see that, you know, um, when you're pushing forward and your hand is actually on the record and you're pushing forward, it's, not, it's very difficult for a human to make a perfectly straight line, you know. Sure. Yeah. If you can, you know, if you use the crossfader to cut out um, all the other parts. But anytime a person's moving back and forth, you know, um, it's, you know, it's great to be able to draw waves with curves. Um, you know, because a lot of times people only draw waves at kind of like uh, straight lines, and that works. But I don't know if you saw, I did a, um, I did a, uh, um, a lecture on uh, on are TTM waves triangular or are they curved? And obviously they can be both, but in general mm -hmm. they're curved because you know it's like if uh, I don't know if you've ever done suicides in um, in sports when they make people run back and forth and you have to <laughs> yeah, run yeah. From point A to point to point uh, D and then point back to point A then point E then back to point A then point C then point A then point B then point A and every time you run back and you change direction you have to stop and slow down so every time the record's scratching and changing direction they eventually mm -hmm. have to stop so so that's cool that you're you know you're putting the difference between um those sounds in there um so what we uh, we discussed quite a bit um and I, I i think it may still change actually looking at it now um was at the moment this kind of push cut this this second line the second exercise there uh -huh. um, i've drawn it basically like half a baby scratch there's there's exactly. basically what exactly. half a baby scratch exactly. um, but then of course the question is you know um it's quite likely when you perform that that actually the attack will be quite sharp because you'll go straight into it um because yeah, you start yeah, a lot of times uh -huh, exactly mm -hmm. yeah so actually i think a probably a more accurate way of drawing that would be um the more kind of uh it's not hard to, kind of like an r shape you know um so it starts mm -hmm. steep and then kind of levels off um exactly. rather than the s shape yeah yeah like you. yeah exactly right, yeah so like, so, you know, I would call that more of like a, you know, just like a, a logarithmic one because in all movements, you know, you can break them down into three things, you know, when you're starting off and the, going from zero to whatever speed you're going, it's usually kind of like an exponential movement. And then, and then at a certain point it becomes linear. And then at a certain point it becomes mm. you know, logarithmic when it's slowing down. Um, but yeah, you're right. Exactly. When you're coming in, most of the time people are coming in so they can hear that straight line constant sound um and i'll send you uh my first book on scratch notation from uh from 99 the fundamentals and in the fundamentals i talk about um ttm 1.0 is my second book on scratch notation mm. released in 2000 
but in uh, 99, I, I released my first book, which was called The, the Fundamentals. And, um, and I kind of go into that about the logarithmic part and the exponential. But yeah, that's very, very cool. And I see, you know, and click symbols have always been gratuitous for any TTM composer out there. You know, click symbols are gratuitous. You know, you don't have to put them there, but, you know, they, they can help you, you know, so you know whether um, something is starting out in the closed fader position or, or the open fader position. But yeah, it's very, very cool because, you know, this, this first level has a lot of, uh, it's kind of like, kind of like an ontological approach. Uh, and for those who don't know what ontological means, on, ontological means kind of like um, how, let's say when a baby's born, it kind of goes through the stages of evolution from an amoeba all the way to this. So an ontological approach to, you know, the, this composition uh, approaches is kind of like, you know, starting with Herbie Hancock and DXT. Mm -hmm and grand was a theodore and starting with all the you know the, the original things that people were actually doing so this is, this is really really great to see you know you can see the evolution of turntablism even within this uh course within your different tiers so we're focusing sure. on the lowest, this is the lowest tier right now which is going way way back you know to you know a lot of you know 70s and 80s type of cuts which mm. that were happening so this is very very cool all these kind of like we call these like military scratches right here, which is like, you know, so like, you mm. know military scratches and stuff like that. Um, and then we get to this next, and I like that you have the different speeds as well, you know, because, you know, different scratches and different speeds, you know, can create a lot of different dynamics. It's good for people that are starting to be able to, um, you know, cut at different speeds. And uh, so, uh, what was y'all? What were y'all's uh, thoughts on on creating these different speeds and whatnot? Well, there's a there's a section of the exam where they have to improvise and just do a, do a scratching improvisation. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's always kind of one of the key one of the key things we want them to be able to use these kind of scratch techniques in a live situation, right? Not just kind of mm -hmm. just memorizing a four bar pattern. You know, that's that's one thing, but you know, scratching really is is a live kind of improvised often often improvised things so we wanted to kind of force them to to do it in different scenarios doing it at different tempos different genres kind of be able to scratch in any in any situation um so yeah so we incorporate uh, different tempos right. so so let's uh let's let's pause and we're gonna have to uh re come back in because it's been 40 minutes all right great <laughs> so let's go back to where we were we're we're examining uh the first tier of your uh the final exams of, of y'all's program which is very very cool and for those that are just tuning in this is um uh final these are final exams for music classes schools in the uh, dj classes in schools in the uk and uh so we're going to do the same thing we did before we're going to share the screen so let me make this screen pop up all right, so share screen. All right, there we go. That's where we want to share. All right, so there we go. There we go. We're back again. All right, so we were just talking right. about this section over here. That was like, you know, we got some some military scratches where it's going like, you know, um, these are like forward cuts, and then you know we've got like just a baby connected to forward cuts. You know, so that's very very cool and. Um, Let's go to this next line. Um, I think we were talking about speeds and stuff like that too. We're, um, uh, did Mr. Switch have most of the input as far as the speeds, or like, did you guys talk about speeds? Like, what what was up with that? Um, so it's one of those um, one of those things that I've always had had written down that I wanted to to include because um, it's not just about kind of different techniques; it's about the way you use them, right? So um, making sure that you know, it wasn't just a, a simple quarter quarter note baby scratch, you know, there's different uh -huh. amplitudes, different speeds, you know, different pitches, um, forcing them to, you know, really get used to, you know, getting used to moving the turntable in quite a specific way, you know, quite uh -huh. an intentional way, um, rather than, you know, um, kind of loosely, um, but really understanding kind of a bigger rotation, a half rotation, smaller rotations, and the, and the speed that you're doing it as well. Um, that was, exactly. Um, Oh, it's an important thing. Good. And when you're in the class, do you do you guys uh, kind of like relate to the kids the the um, the connection between like um, speed and slope and and um, relating it to regular music as far as like octaves? Like, hey, if it's if the 
if it's twice as if it's going twice as fast and it's one octave up or twice as slow the octave down. You guys talk about those types of things or no? <laughs> no, I've not actually read up on that. How's that how's that work? Well, so if you with with the turntable, um, let's say you have a beat and it's a hundred beats per minute and you speed it up, you know, um twice as are basically um the way that I so like in, in pianos we look at it as is, you know, um a note and this is the octave up and this is the octave up and this is the octave up. But really um from a wavelength perspective, uh so mm -hmm. my internet connection's unstable. From a wavelength perspective, um each octave is is uh twice the wavelength. Right. So if something's at four hundred and forty four hertz, like if A is at four hundred and forty hertz, then the next A is gonna be at eight hundred and eighty hertz. Or the A yeah. below yeah. it is gonna be two hundred and twenty hertz. Sure, sure, sure. So, so you can look at hertz, or you look at it as you can look at it as the distance of the record. So when mm -hmm. I was showing you before, um, can you see me right now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. So you can see me, and you can see the uh, the notation. Yeah, I can. Swap oh, cool, 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 excellent, good. Um, because before what I was showing you this before I was showing you the um this uh BPM protractor. So what what I did yeah. with this BPM protractor, this is basically a tool for converting um angle into um beats per minute so you um it has a regular um protractor on here where you can just you know measure the regular degrees but this thing has a converter in it where you can convert degrees to um to actual beats per minute so um so the way that works is is like let's say you have any one speed like let's say you have something that goes this far in this amount of time like let's say this is the angle not the arc length because arc length is always changing but the, you know, let's say you have a certain angle. Let's say, um, let, let's say I'll use 120 degrees because that's that's 100 beats per minute. So uh, for 100 beats per minute, um, one quarter note is going to be at 120 degrees. So that record is going to move 120 degrees in in uh, in that amount of time. So then if you yeah. if you um, if somebody were to push the record twice as fast, instead of going 120 degrees to be 100 beats per minute and it went um 60 degrees then that's going to be twice as fast and that'd be instead of being 100 beats per minute it's going to be 200 beats per minute and if there was a if there was an actual melodic sound in that then the sound would be you know one octave up so that, that's what i was saying with, with that stuff um so that's very very cool and um so at the end here uh i noticed we that there's a differentiation between um uh the, the sound playing as a as just like letting it play and then pulling it back versus the higher rows where they're doing more baby scratches um just going back and forth so that's very cool very cool yeah exactly let's, let's that was uh, one of the skills that we wanted to include so that was one of the so one of the skills so um so it was baby scratch we wanted to include baby scratches um what uh, Tony would call a drop scratch. So where you release the record and, and scratch it back, which we got at the bottom there. Um, then we got the forward cuts and the kind of release cuts as well, the, the, the drop cuts. So those were kind of the four techniques that we uh, we wanted to, nice. uh, to use in these examples um, and kind of swapping between them. And so, yeah, the, the last exercise kind of um, is most, is kind of swaps between kind of baby and, and, and drop scratches. Nice. So let me load up the next one. Uh, let's see. So um, let me switch first and switch to uh, just us. Let's see. You are screen sharing. Stop share. So let me stop the share before I so I can uh, get this next one ready and we can talk about something else. All right. And so w let's talk about your. I want to know more about your DJing background. Um, you think you go by DJ Checkers? Um, I think before you were telling me you came more out of like rave culture or electronica, like what kind of stuff were you first spinning? So it's, it's always been, um, been techno really. Okay. Um, so the guys, the guys who taught me, um, uh, great DJ school in, in London actually while I, while I was there, um, could become a DJ. Bad studio, oh, you went so. to DJ school. Wow. That's great. Yeah. 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 That's, mm -hmm. that's, yeah. That's how I started. So, I mean, um, okay. so yeah, I, I would say maybe five years ago. Um, uh -huh. nice. and, and so, yeah, the yeah. name of the school is again? Um, so become a DJ. Become um, a DJ, okay. Yeah, become a DJ, bad students. Um, and they are absolutely brilliant. And uh, what I kind of discovered quite quickly in, 
um, what I absolutely love about DJ in any kind of genre really um, is that the way they were thinking about music and the way they were kind of explaining music and DJing to me was exactly the way that people in the classical world do you know it's exactly uh -huh. the same kind of thought exactly the same approach just in a completely different culture um, uh, yeah and so yeah I absolutely loved it and uh, it's it, it really just connected with me as is um something to do so so yeah and um the guys who run that studio were uh, you know, really into their techno so I was, I was definitely uh, slightly influenced by them but um then yeah it's it's been a, a bit of an obsession with uh, the kind of dark depths of of the techno world um for me did they do uh because i mean obviously they're doing mixing and stuff but do they do like any scratching or or backspinning or juggling or no so that was so i started just predominantly mixing um so that's kind of the focus that they do there and then um so when we met tony and kind of building this curriculum out that's that's mm. when kind of scratching got involved with the, the scratching and yeah. learning about that side of djing mm -hmm. um so you yeah, know it's, it's it's a new it's a completely new side of djing um actually um it's, it's been so i've been kind of learning as i've been as we've been writing these for tony and, and thinking about the techniques and i've been learning them as, as we've been constructing something to teach others with so it's, it's been quite a useful uh, experience very cool very cool so in, in types of techno like i mean are you more into minimal techno you know disco house i'm like what kind of uh you know any countries any regions you know old school techno, uh, techno? yeah i mean um yeah anything kind of semantica records non-series um anything from kind of atmospheric ambient techno to real kind of heavy industrial stuff um mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's yeah it's it's funny. I couldn't explain how I ended up there, but uh, uh, I've gone from <laughs> I've gone from classical music to to, to techno. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I think there's the, the, you know the, the culture, the clubbing culture with 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 techno, kind of really really serious techno, if you like. Um, I really connected with that. There's a really great community there of people who really you know enjoy the music and go. go there's a hundred percent there for the, for the music and. Uh, um, I think I, I really connected with that as well. Oh, so you were raving. Kind of the community that comes with. Oh, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Sure. You were raving as a youth. Uh, well, probably more more as an adult than I was as a youth. Oh, more as an adult. Okay, cool, cool. Uh -huh. Nice, nice. Yeah. And and that's mostly techno or, I mean, were, are you into German bass, different other genres or just techno? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've done, a bit, done a bit of everything, but uh, yeah, predominantly, predominantly techno, yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, I grew up mostly on pretty much just hip hop. Uh, when I was in high school, I was pretty much only into hip hop. And then uh, in high school, my friend that taught me how to DJ, he had a bunch of like old school house crates and stuff like that. So then I had some house stuff. But then it wasn't until I went to really college and in, in the late 90s that I started getting into uh, um, more. I think because I came from turntablism, I think I gravitated to uh, all the and stuff and these warp records and and, um, and and stuff like that and uh you know so square pusher and, and um, Apex twin and all that type of stuff and mm. all tecker and all that stuff um i think i kind of gravitated to the stuff that was more uh harsher and and, uh, and also stuff that had hip-hop kind of beats like the you know more trip -hop stuff but mm. more stuff that never repeated and, and i've always found a very strong connection with turntablism and uh, and kind of like idm music in general just because of the um a lot of the times in the beats you know they're never repeated twice and um for a lot of stuff you know keeping the drums a lot more organic so for me, i was always into like really organic drum work mm. that wasn't just straight loops so i think mm. that's what I gravitated to um, like Aphex and Square Pusher and stuff like that because of just, you know, I'm in Tobin and all that stuff, Ninja Tune, you know. Um, yeah. And then, so luckily in 2003, um, I linked with my homie Tess and he had been signed to Lex Records, which at that time was a division of Warp Records. So we mm. got to, you know, just do a bunch of touring with, with stuff like that. Actually, the last time I was out in uh, the UK was uh, way back in, in uh, like, in the Danger Mouse tour and the Grey Album tour. That's that's nice. like in the UK, but what um but yeah, that's just just you know where I come. So I, so I've always been, you know really been into the, like the IDM stuff just because you know like if you see when I see Steve D, you know backspinning like you know he invented 
you know, juggling, when I see him juggling and then I see like great core and stuff like that, I was just having a, a conversation with a friend. I feel like Steve D is really the creator of great core, you know, and mm. a lot of the sounds like, you know, um, turntables were already doing it before the, the Jays were starting to cutting it up with the computer. Because you know, they were only starting to do that by the late '80s and the and the and the early '90s, really cutting stuff up, cutting the brakes up. But the turntables were already cutting the brakes up in the early '80s, and late '70s. You know, yeah. for me, I think that you know turntablism doesn't get as much. You know, people call it like, oh, it's this subgenre, subgenre. You know, but for me, I think it's it's a lot more foundational than people would, uh, you know, uh, give it credit for. Just like how it's mm. with you know the, all that stuff. So I'm gonna load up this uh, the second tier. I found it. This it took it took that long for Facebook to load up. I got a little <laughs> one of those little small web web laptops that I'm using right now, so I think it has a lot of RAM. So maybe that's why it took long. But uh, I was, yeah. uh, just to get to me, I think um, as far as kind of my tastes go, I think maybe coming from kind of being so exposed to like orchestral music and having mm -hmm. all those, there's such like kind of variety of, of of sound and complex textures. I think I think that might, that's maybe why techno is so appealing in many ways because there's such a like a wide spectrum of sound mm. that, you, that you get you know the whole spectrum is just full of sound and i think i think i really like that mm. um i love that just kind of being being immersed in something especially on the dance floor you know um so yeah i think that's probably what, probably what right. about like trance and progressive stuff you know progressive techno like build-ups and stuff like are you into that or are you not a lot of people yeah, I, like, oh trans people you know i like everything but yeah, I know, and I think it's, it's, it's the same here. Like, um, mm -hmm. I'm always, I'm always wary of people who, who, who love one genre and hate all other genres. Like, uh -huh, right, you've got, right. You, you've got to, you've got to have an appreciation for, for all kinds of genres, even if you have a preference for one. Like, there's no reason why you, you can't understand why other people might like other genres. And really, there's always something to love about every, every track, really, and whatever it is. So, um, exactly. No, for sure, like pretty, pretty eclectic. Exactly. And uh, um, so, so I'm about to pull up the second one. So this is the artist level. So the first one was debut. Now this uh, second so the one, let's one. See, share screen. Oh, that's so the third artist, one. Yeah, artist is the third one. Maybe. Oh, I, I opened the wrong one. Um, so let me. Uh, I guess we can. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna jump to that one yet. So we can just keep talking for a second. I'm gonna load up this other one. Uh, let me find it. It's taking Messenger forever to open up. Um, okay, there we go. So the artist is the last level. Breakthrough is second level. Correct, yeah. Breakthrough is the second level. Okay, so I'm going to open up Breakthrough. All right. So let's see. Debut, artist, Breakthrough. I'm waiting for the PDF to download. Let's see. There we go. Now it's starting to download. All right. Now I can open it. Good. So now I'm going to do share screen. All right. So let's see. Yeah, so now we're going to talk about this other one. Um, let's see, it's still loading. There we go. Okay, so, but there it goes. It's loaded. So let's share it. All right, so now you can see it. Yeah, it's thinking about it. All right, this is great. So this, um, on this one is very, very cool because we were talking about this yesterday or the other day, two days ago. Um, I see that you have like the first kind of instance in uh, of uh, of Rocket here. You know, it's like, dip, dip, mm. oh. Dip, 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 oh. <laughs> Right, so very, very cool. And like I was saying again, it's great to have that reference of of you know the pioneers and and, and the things you know like DXT that that uh you know invented this pattern right here for those that are watching. So you can see you can see my cursor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good, good, excellent, great. And then yeah, this is really great. And I like that these uh these uh these rubs are aren't starting on the are starting on the backwards motion because you know us usually people are always used to starting scratches on the forward motion but you know being able to start a scratch on the fo on the backward motion is a very important concept to be able to grasp mm -hmm. especially when yeah. trying to get to higher levels very very cool and then i noticed um you have uh there's some uh some flares down here at the at level two uh chirps chirps yeah oh, oh yeah 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 some chirps you're right yeah chirps right there some chirps all right and so yes, yeah, so you got these chirps. So what about so what um, compelled you guys to uh, do these different? Uh, we got a backward slice right there, right? And you know what's also interesting about chirps is that um, like how you have this backward slice right here. Um, you have this backward slice right here. 
you notice that anytime you have uh, repeating chirps, you're going to have uh, upside down slices, right? Hmm. Because you, yeah, you can that look at it as two important. chirps, or you can also look at it as like a um, up, upside down slice right there. Right. That, that's pretty. That's pretty cool. Because um, I, I, have you ever heard of uh, uh, Feynman? No, no, I a scientist. Well, he was a, a quantum scientist, uh, like on doing quantum mechanics, and mm -hmm. his diagrams. Um, he was kind of a the first to draw these diagrams that kind of look like this where um, he was drawing the interactions of particles. Like if you have an electron and then you have a positron, which is an electron going backwards in time and then they hit, he would draw two lines. Like this line is the electron, this one's the positron and they hit and they turn into a photon. So you can hmm. look at it as either a photon is exploding and turning into those two things or you could look at it, you could look at it from a lot of different ways. And you know, because when you're dealing with photons, once you hit uh, with photons, time is time stops basically with photons. And um, so when you're looking at how particles like subatomic particles, basically, he made these charts about subatomic particles that, you know, allow people to, uh, um, you know, basically uh, conceptualize the interactions between, you know, protons and neutrons and electrons and positrons and gluons and all these crazy, you know, subatomic particles that 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 uh and how they interact but yeah so when i created um ttm i i was also influenced by that because you know in uh high school i had had a teacher named steve segur that um was working with, with some people at brown university about you know the fourth dimension and stuff like that so really this is a fourth dimensional uh notation um that's basically showing the movement of the cue point over time mm. right and then the clicks are happening you know exactly uh, where uh, you know a different cue point um, at a certain degree of the cue point. So that's why you know being able to have the reference all the way you know to the the sound that's being used is important because then you can see you know where the click is happening um, sure. relative to, to the sample and also relative to the cue point. Knowing that okay that original cue point is at the beginning and you're lining that thing up at the beginning and then. Now you're clicking it at the end. This chirp is you're clicking it at the end of the um, of the scratch, and then you're opening it back up for the for the backwards motion. Mm. Now this is really cool too. Uh, over here, I noticed that um, you um, you guys have some kind of like amplitude modulation. I like to call these uh, AM like babies or AM rubs or or any type of scratch that's in it. If it's a chirp or if it's a flare, you know. Um, I've always wanted to just kind of use a lot of the mathematical uh, 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 jargon instead of just creating new names for new scratches. So like when I created the matrix and I created a lot of these things, I I was focusing on um, not uh, being like, you know, like let's say I'm taking a chair and I'm taking the two click chair and making some hybrid. I'm not just being like, hey, this is a new scratch. Um, anytime I hybrided something, I would, just hybrid the actual names that already existed. I was trying as hard as possible not to create any new names. Some scratches I, I was forced to create new names if it was something that really hadn't been done. But even with that, I would still try to use historical names and splice them together. So, so uh, with this one right here, we we see like the the amplitude is actually going down. I've started to call these kind of like you know kind of like amplitude like AM AM rubs or AM babies or something like that, where it's like. Nice. Your, your amp the amplitude modulation is changing over time, and then you could have FM rubs where you know the the amplitude is the same, but the period is changing and it's, and they're yeah, it's cool. longer over time. You know, and and through that, you know, in my schools, I, I, I at TTM Academy, I teach the difference between you know FM modulation and AM modulation. So it's really cool to be able to, to see these um, in, the, in the routine because a lot of DJs don't do that. A lot of DJs they just scratch, but they never like I was saying before they never different pitches and mm. for for people to be able to practice um you know scratching at different pitches we got four different pitches here great yeah. so do, um um do, uh, do you have any thoughts on that on, on on just the different pitches and yeah i mean i guess um kind of approaching this from the perspective of how you would learn another instrument i guess um is where these kind of ideas came from and kind of breaking down every aspect of what you're doing in, into into stages into kind of turning it into something progressive so in the first level you know there are 
there are only two different amplitudes and a few different frequencies. And at this level, you've got, you've got the four amplitudes. And you're also, in that same exercise, you're now using um, a different section of, of, of the sample. It's not all from, from the bottom of the sample. You know, you're know, you using different sections of the sample too. So again, it was all just a process of like breaking breaking things down as, mu as much as possible and then building it back up again in, in stages, which you know, is exactly you know, how um, other instruments are approached you know, when, when these kind of exams are, are created um for for flute or or, or whatever so um uh -huh. I, yeah i guess that's kind of where the attitude came from very very cool great great that's great um you know what's funny too is because you know in uh when i was in high school jazz band i played the trombone and you know the trombone has the whole slide thing mm. i don't know if you've heard of uh, anthony braxton have you heard of anthony braxton no uh, he was a jazz, uh, he won the MacArthur Grant, you know, he won the famous MacArthur Grant in the 90s, maybe the late 90s or something. Um, and I think he spent the whole thing up in like two weeks or something, like paying a bunch of session players to, you know, com to, to actually play some of his uh, compositions. But he was a philosopher and a composer, and he, um, uh, jazz saxophone is still alive. And... Um, he, or in classical experimental uh, saxophonists, you know, he composed pieces for like other planets and, you know, he was influenced with Sun Ra and the, and the Art Ensemble of Chicago, all those guys, mm -hmm. you definitely um, check that out. Um, I'll send you some links like Art Ensemble of Chicago, you know, Sun Ra and stuff. But he had some, uh, he made his own notational systems, his own uh, music notation. And uh, he was um, doing a lot, a lot of out there things but uh, one of the th one of the things he was doing is he said he he came up with the idea that he said every instrument should have its own form of notation, which was a really interesting concept, you know to me when I thought about it. Um, I was reading some of his works when I was working on my second book on notation, and uh, and what was uh, or maybe it was a little bit after actually. My friend put me into it a little bit after later two thousand two thousand one, and. Um, you know, and, and that just made me think, I was like, you know, because I used to play trombone, and, you know, the fact that you have the sliding in it, um, and well, other instruments, you know, let's say it's like a piano, you can use a tool to slide, but, you know, every instrument has so many unique elements to it, that it makes more sense for each instrument to have their own notation, and then maybe even have different types of, like, macro notations for, like, okay, well, we've got, you know, violin notation, we've got tonal notation, but here's string notation, string, you know, string notation can uh, communicate with all these other notations. Or, you know, just like how maybe, you know, in, in China, you have Cantonese and, and uh, Mandarin and, you know, they can still understand each other in, in some different, different dialects, ways, you know, or, or different dialects of Latin languages. So I just thought that was a really interesting concept. Um, he's actually got a son named Ty Braxton that's much younger that you know, uses a lot of effects pedals and he's on Warp Records, a lot of expensive stuff in a, in a band called Battles. I don't know if you've ever heard of Battles. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah. I guess to an, like, to an extent that's, that's kind of happened already. If you think of, mm -hmm. um, you know, there are specific notations for, you know, slurs and things on the trumpet uh -huh. and trombone and there are yeah, also specific yeah. notations for, for violin. So, yeah, yeah, to an extent that has, that has kind of happened. It's kind of, standard music notation has kind of developed in that in that way definitely definitely yeah all right so yeah and then i see here you have uh you guys have broken it down into like some phrase scratching where right here instead of using the beginning of the ah uh, sample you're using you're going you're starting in the middle of it which sure. is yeah, yeah. very cool because I, th I think that you know it's very important to to um you know, learn about phrase scratching and, and stuff like that all right so let's now we're going to go to the next one Let's do this. Oh, the fourth one. Let's go to the fourth. Oh, that is the fourth row. That is the fourth row. Let me see. The other one I was zoomed out. Good. So that was at the fourth row. And then, um, so let's see. Are there any cuts that I want to talk about? Yeah, great. So um, now uh, let's go to the next one. I'm going to go to, uh, it's called Artist. Artist is the last one. The one, yeah. Okay, yeah. This is the one with the flare. I was looking at the all right, yeah, so the so the artist one start off with the cool flare here. And then I like that you're you're doing this flare where it's paused, where it's going wuku, and then they're having a hook mm. and then go wuku and way back, you know, which is a very difficult concept, you know, to be able to just do half of a scratch or pause a scratch, you know, being able to do a 
Sure. Like, click orbit right in the second one, but then uh, you know being able to do the two click and then pause it right here and then you know hold it for like the sixteenth note or whatever and then kind of start and back up again is very very cool. It's very very difficult, right? And then I guess we would call this one. This is kind of like a hippo, a hippopotamus. You know, half a half a flare, then half a orbit. Um, you know, yeah. Scratch. Um, yeah, very very yeah. cool. Yeah, it's just a good example. This one, um, that first one of um, creating a pattern that you know has a has a kind of flow to it. There's a there's a you know it kind of repeats in a way. It's got um, the flare and the flare with the pause in the middle, and then it repeats in the third bar. There's another there's an orbit this time, and then an orbit with a pause in the middle. Um, and this is just kind of part of the process of creating kind of memorable patterns rather than just exactly, kind of exactly. random. And yeah. you've got a bit of a yeah, test. This is really great for a test, especially having these side by side, because, you know, it's easy just to be like, hey, do these 10 scratches. But being able to say, mm -hmm. no, do these two scratches in these two different ways is very, very uh, focused, very important. And these are really hard. These are very difficult. All these flirps and all this kind of, kind of stuff. This is uh, very, very cool stuff. And then let me see. I, was, I thought there was, a, um, I was trying to find this one we had talked about the other day. That one that was kind of like the fake Joe Cooley. Kind of, maybe it was in the last one. Let me click on. Yeah, that one. It was in the last Yeah, it was at the bottom, the bottom of the last one, yeah. Let's see. This artist debut and breakthrough. No, it's supposed to be breakthrough. Okay, yeah, it was at the end. These right here. Yeah, I love these right here. Um, it's funny because before I was actually able to do the Joe Cooley scratch, um, I really added the Joe Cooley, Joe Cooley scratch to my repertoire like maybe a year ago or something like that. You know, like I could. Do it a little bit before but i wasn't able to do it fast but it's really went down and practice how to be able to do it fast but before that i was able to do these and i have been doing these for years and these sound a lot like the joe cooley scratch where it's going stiff foot and then the joe cooley scratch has a tear in there instead of a scribble it's going making three sounds and then a, another chirp going stiff foot so it's like stiff foot, stiff foot, stiff foot, right but this one is going stiff foot, stiff foot, stiff foot, stiff foot which is really, really, it sounds almost the same when you're going super fast, but it's, um, it's actually yeah. a scratch. Um, I was telling you the last time, I'll, I'll pull out this routine. This is, uh, this routine right here is uh, one that I was doing um, for the IDM, um, for the IDM, uh, comp I'm not sorry, not IDM, IDA. I was thinking about IDM. The IDA competition, um, you know, I was just practicing, I was, I was trying to record a set and I was like, you know what, let me just write it down because I'm usually uh, a lot of times I'll, I'm last minute and doing stuff last minute when I'm recording battle stuff. So I was like, okay, it's last minute. You know, let me just write this out and then execute what I write out. And uh, and I and I added some of those at the end. So if you see, we got the same. Let me see. Where's the wrong section? Yeah, maybe like right. Yeah. Where are they? Yeah, like right there. Those are actually no. This is a uh, reverse now. Is this reverse? Is this, yeah, this is reverse. How do I reverse the screen? Let me see. Maybe if I can, uh, just put, there's some way to reverse the screen, right? Like, um, your, um, let's see, stop share. There's gotta be some way to reverse. But you know what? It shouldn't matter actually, because even though it's, it's the same thing, it's, same thing, it's, it's symmetric. So <laughs> yeah. for this one particular scratch, it shouldn't matter. I'm just trying to actually find the scratch. Let me see. I'll just, Put my finger there so I can see where it is. Right, so it's right there. That scratch, these scratches right there. So you can yeah, we got it. Ones. Yeah, yeah, you can see those same ones. So it's going, diff it, diff it, diff it, diff it, you know. And yeah, it's just very, very, that's, that's very difficult in itself. And that's definitely, you know, level two. That's very, very cool. Um, so let's go back to the last page. I'm going to load this up again. Uh, let's see, share screen. Let's see, break. So this is breakthrough. All right, so let's go back to here. All right, great. So we're back now. So so um, now we've got. So I, I see that you've um, in this new one. Uh, I mean, this last one, this last row. Um, you've got little bits from all the things from the past in there, kind of a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Stabbing, you know, the kind of rocket stuff. You know, that's very very cool. Like this is. This is very complicated. You know, most most DJs I know can't do it. Most DJs I know, 
the majority of DJs I know can't do that. And even if they can do those scratches individually, most, a lot of times, most people can't, uh, for the most part, since this is such a new thing, most people mm -hmm. can't read this anyway, you know, sure. um, and be able to execute this. And the ones that can, um, sometimes don't have the skill to be able to do it, or the ones that have the skill sometimes don't have the ability to be able to, to, to sight read or, or, you know, sit down and do it. But, you know, it's just such a new thing that, you know, eventually, you know, years from now as, as uh, you know, uh, you know, things, uh, time transpires, you know, people will be able to, you know, sight read much easier. Mm. And this is kind of, uh, this is the thing, I mean, so this, this level is, you know, equivalent to, to a grade five in, in any other instrument, so, um, and, you know, grade five, you know, you've been, to achieve a grade five, you've got to be playing an instrument for, for a good few years, and, you know, you acquired a, a lot of information, a lot of skill, and, there's a, you know, many, many hours of practice in order to get a grade five, so, when we were thinking about, you know, the difficulty levels here, um, you know, you, you shot quite high. You know, you made, it's uh, it is it is a challenge. But um, as is grade five in any instrument, you know, we had to make sure it was, it was equivalent to to the grade five in in on the clarinet or or whatever. Um, mm. So, yeah. But there's there's you know there's room to go further for sure. Um, yeah, and and speaking of further, um, I think last time we were talking about um, uh, chords and stuff and DJ Swamp making the. I was telling yeah, you about yeah. how DJ Swamp has a series of records where each track on the record is like a different step, uh, a, a note of a guitar, like a like mm. a power chord or something on a guitar. So then you know you can um, you know move the needle around and uh, and play different melodies. But you know if you have a, what's called a rake needle, like a two-headed needle, so you don't have to rake over here. I thought I had my rake out at some point. I don't know where it is, but uh, you know, a two-headed needle can allow DJs to be able to, um, you know, play more than one sound at you know, one time. So, like, um, I was thinking about uh, DJ um, DJ Woody. Um, sure, sure, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, really good guy. Uh, have you seen his uh, polyphonic uh, scratch stuff? Yeah, I, yeah, I watched it after you. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, great. You watched it, good. Yeah, yeah, polyphonic, yeah, scratching, yeah. It's, it's really, really cool, you know, because he's using his mixer, the the digital things of his mixer to kind of bypass having to have like a, a you know, like a, a, a rake needle, like a special needle that has multiple. Oh, so, yeah. But, you know, um, you know, that's, that's, uh, you know, part of the, the definitely the future of, uh, of a lot of like high level uh, scratch composition stuff. This is yeah, yeah. Stuff. And, and, and tone play uh, in general, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And it's you know what? Something yeah, you know what? Sorry. I, oh no, you go. I was just saying, you know, if we, um, you know, doing higher levels, we can start incorporating tone play using the pitch fader, creating different, um, creating different pitches like that as well. Um, so yeah, there's there's plenty of plenty of ways to make it more advanced. Yeah, this is but this is super high level. Just this right here, you know, because uh, um, I'm pretty certain that the people that have the skill to be able to do this, it would take them. They have they would have to learn how to read it to right. uh, yeah. be able to, to, to really be able to, to be able to do it. And you know, it's funny, um, even with myself, even having invented this system, all these years that I've been practicing, I've always practiced without notation. Like I would practice, you know, like, oh, let me just, you know, like more like lifting weights. Like, okay, I'm gonna practice on a flare today and some Joe Cooley's and this four click, four triplet click. I'm gonna practice on these three. I used to do that and I found that, um, I've been more successful just practicing this since I, I, I wrote this in like the, the fall of last year. And mm. in the fall of last year, I practiced this like basically like every day, maybe like just to keep myself sharp. Um, and I found that I've had more success being sharper and getting better just by practicing one thing that's, that's been written down versus just like, oh, thinking in my head and practicing stuff and just kind of zoning out. I've noticed that having a focused practice and being forced to play a specific uh, pattern and being forced to play stuff has, has made my, um, you know, skill level higher and then also my, my sight reading level higher. Mm -hmm. Practicing sight reading is another skill in itself, you know, because it's one thing, you know, one thing being able to do what's on a, on a piece of paper, but being able to actually, you know, look at it and sight read it and, and comprehend it and stuff is a whole nother skill to have to 
practice, you know. Yeah, and absolutely. Practicing my sight reading a lot more. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's one of the best skills that um, you can develop is when you learn an instrument. I mean, sight reading has so many applications outside of, of reading music, you know, it's, it's, it's brilliant to be able to process something ahead of what you're doing in the moment is exactly yeah, exactly like, yeah, seeing what's coming ahead exactly yeah. um so yeah i mean uh so there'll be there'll be audio and video as well so um so they won't just have to you know read the notation if they prefer to to listen to it and and learn it from, from listening or, or or watch uh someone do it then you can learn it that way too that's very cool so there's a is there like a recording of mr switch doing these yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ah, nice, nice. That's great. That's great. Great. And it's video too, as well, or it's just audio? Uh, yeah, we're going to do videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. That's great. Yeah. Very, very cool. And tell me more about your composition as far as you're talking about opera and, and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, well, um, so yeah, I mean, as I, was, as I was saying, like creating stories in music is always something I really liked doing. I always you know, sometimes I would, you know, write a story before I actually wrote the music, just so I could, you know, and then had something to follow. Mm -hmm. um, so I like, yeah, I like doing things like that, and um, you know, just trying to convey things, places, emotions, just um, trying to kind of connect to have that kind of human connection in, in uh -huh. all the music created. Um, so, you know, I wasn't particularly that kind of abstract, but I, I always tried to find new interests sounds new combinations of things new kind of harmonies that you know evoked evoked emotions that weren't kind of normal you know that were just slightly obscure that you couldn't quite put your finger on or you know uh -huh. just kind of complex stuff and um so that, that was kind of um what i always tried to achieve and, and the same goes for my djing as well you know if um uh when i you know do techno mixes you know i'm, I'm always there's always a there's always a point to my mix, you know. I'm always mm -hmm. aiming for a certain track that has a certain you know reaction um, in me, and it's the way of kind of you've got to figure out what context to put that track in and how to you know, lift it or how to emphasize it or how to you know exaggerate the kind of the feelings that I that are created by it. And, um, mm -hmm. So I think about yeah, I think about music in all in in, in that way, and you know, regardless of of what I'm doing, um, it's the same you know with scratching, you know, just learning to improvise you're scratching you know you're having conversations you're, you're um it's, it's it's yeah it's again it's everything you do kind of has a beginning it has a middle and it's an end you're, you're always developing um ideas you know you maybe have a little you come up with a little idea and then mm -hmm. the next bar you repeat it you'll extend it in some way you'll vary it and then you create a bigger idea and then that can come back later it's just thinking about kind of structure in that sense and and how that structure you know creates creates music and yeah that's, that's always kind of been my approach very cool and uh the students do they ever record their works do you guys have them uh like make mixes or yeah for sure yeah no our, um our, our tutors do that a lot um so they got some sound clouds um sound cloud accounts oh, nice. and, um, set them stuff great, up, so. that's great and do they ever uh do you guys ever have them collaborate is there only usually just one turntable in the class or everybody has their own uh, so we, yeah, we provide just one. So there's one controller um, okay. in the school. Um, mm. But yeah, I mean, yeah, we we like to, you know, try and create a bit of a community of students. You know, they're the future DJs in the school. You know, um, so yeah, they they know each other and uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, because uh, I just taught a. Um, I don't know if you've heard of the Next Level program in the U.S. There's a program called the Next Level program where the U.S. Department of State's, the U.S. Department of State sends uh f like six artists maybe uh to a developing country and they do it like maybe five different countries a year so they'll send mm -hmm. like basically like a rapper a dj a beat maker uh a break dancer or a, a break dancers don't like saying i shouldn't say break dancer i should say like a b-boy dancer and then like maybe like uh maybe a beatboxer maybe a graffiti artist they might be at it sometimes five sometimes six but they send them out to developing countries around the world and then they uh have them um they do like a two to three week uh hip-hop training course so i got nice. for that thing and they sent me to uh cartagena and i was using the same thing oh. I was using the pioneers uh what is that called the dd what is it 
So there's an XDJ RR or an XDJ no, RX2 or the DDJ400. The one that doesn't have the Q point. Because that's. Yeah. So, uh, uh, XDJ RR, maybe? Oh, okay. Yeah. I forgot the model. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was, I was using that. And those are really great for teaching. Those are very, very yeah, cool yeah. For, for teaching yeah. kids. So I was going to show you this thing um, right here. Uh, this is something new coming up that I'm going to be releasing soon as an actual executable um, application. Now, oh, sweet. originally when I first created the, the Scratch Matrix um, about a decade ago, uh, I wanted that to be an application. And it still will be an application in the future, but it's just so huge, there's a, a thousand scratches on it. You know, it's just yeah, yeah. so much programming. It was it, like, because um, uh, my experience is more being trained in uh, Flash applications. So I'm going to be mm. doing that Flash. And uh, when I tried to load the matrix in, it would just crash my flash. You know, it was just too big, you know? But so I was like, you know what? Let me just start off smaller and modular. So, so I was like, okay, um, you know, so let me uh, show you this. I'm going to um, do share screen. So this is a new project that I'm working on. This is called the, uh, um, the, 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 the PMOS 100 or the peri periodic matrix of scratches 100 version where it's just 100 scratches, um, where, where I chose it. So it's just 100 scratches. So this what this is going to be is going to be an educational and a musical tool to where um, you can, can you see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, where you can touch the scratch and you can hear the scratch, right? So, you know, so for educational purposes, it's like, hey, what does a reverse slice sound like? And then they can, you know, click on the button and they can click on the reverse slice and they'll hear the reverse slice. Nice. Um, but then also people will be able to use this as a standalone like music application. Like if, if, if they couldn't actually scratch very well and somebody was a producer and they're good at drumming and they, they, just, they just wanted to be like, hey, let me see what it's like to use these sounds uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in more of a producer kind of context and, and, um, and just and punch all these out and, and play these as, as notes, somebody can do that as well. So this is going to be, um, uh, th this will be uh, the first prototype of it be, will be ready very soon. This whole COVID thing slowed everything down. Because uh, before COVID happened, I was, you know, focused on that. But now, you know, all this COVID stuff threw things off a little bit. But uh, uh, so, yeah, so this is going to be basically like, you know, where people can get each of these different sounds and, and uh, actually trigger them as like a sampler. So this is like a scratch sampler. And this is just a first version. It's just going to have like the ah sound in it. But in future versions, you know, I'll have different sounds as well as ones where you can input your own sound and then it'll be able to mm. play all the, that same sound in the different permutations. But that's a lot more complex. That's a whole nother level. But this, this first level, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, being able to play sounds and, and uh, people being able to that's play cool. too. And ideally too, I, I might add little tabs in there to, that if we know who created the sound, who, who created the technique, a link to, you know, or a little bio or some type of information about, um, you know, who created these scratches, where if it's like, oh, it's the Joe Cooley scratch, you know, you might be able to click on his name and, and you know, it can also take you to, to Joe Cooley's page or his Instagram or something like that, you know. But yeah, I'll definitely get you guys, you know, a copy when, once, it's, uh, once it's ready. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be um, brilliant for our students. Yeah, and I'm curious too about the, the makeup of the classes. Is it uh, uh, um, how, as far as gender, like, are, are there a lot of women in the class or is it, you know? Yeah, there are. Um, it's, girls it's, are. it's not quite 50, 50, but, um, they, oh, wow, but it's actually comparable. Okay. It's, yeah, it's not, it's not far away. Yeah. Um, uh, it's about 60, 40, oh, um, that's great. That's which, great. which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really cool. Again, yeah. it's this you know, DJing is, uh, it's brilliant. It's just breaks down all boundaries. You know, it's, it's, it's relevant to, to all genders, races, um, every community, every demographic, and um, it's a really effective thing. And exactly. you know, everybody loves DJing, right? It's like everybody loves DJing. Everybody doesn't love the flute, <laughs> right? It's like everybody's not. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, I mean, I mean, I'm sure it's like musical, like genres and cultures. You know, like every culture now is using turntables, but you know, mm -hmm. some some cultures don't use some instruments. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. For sure, and you know, you know, maybe the. You know, you're making generalizations here, but you know, the only community that hasn't really adopted the, the turntables is the kind of classical music community. And, mm. um, you know, oh, yeah, everyone exactly. else 
mm. much has. And, but it's just, you know, the great thing about, you know, doing these exams, it's like we're, we're making DJing, you know, an equivalent grade to, to, a, to a more conventional kind of classical instrument, which is a really cool thing. So, um, you yeah, know, we're kind of trying to tick all the boxes, really. Kids love it. Mm -hmm. Everyone can do it. And, you know, it is it, it has just as much value as, as learning another instrument. Yeah, it's great. And that same, it's, it's great that you mentioned the term classical because um, that same guy that I was talking about before, Anthony Braxton, I was mentioning, mm. he, uh, he also created, uh, created this kind of like three tier system of analyzing music as far as like um, about more about how music was created and how things are innovated um, or how innovators emerge. Like you're saying mm. that there's basically three types of musicians, the, the reformists, the stylists, and then um, like the classicists, kind of like the reformists coming in and uh, totally changing things. And usually the reformists don't get paid because their stuff is so out there, you know, that people are just like, whoa, what is this? This is like totally, mm. totally weird, you know? And then, you know, usually they're totally underground or on some underground label or whatever. And then, then somebody else, a stylist will hear that sound and be like, wow, that's cool. Let me flip that. And, and then they kind of create yeah, 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 yeah. style based off of that foundation but then they kind of capitalize off of it they're able to maybe get it out yep. there to where they sign to a bigger label and then it becomes popular and then you know because it's funny like you know like in the 90s we would hear like you know totally out there kind of uh idm stuff and then now 20 30 years later you hear britney spears or you know music or car commercials doing stuff that people that was really really obscure were doing in the 90s you know, yeah, so sure. things kind of take a while to matriculate into like the pop sphere, but eventually, yeah, yeah, sometimes yeah. pop does in incorporate things that were totally reformist. You know, decades and decades before that. So yeah, so it goes from the reformist to the stylist that make the money off of it, and then 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 it goes to the people that study it, the the classical music, where it becomes like the classicist, and that's this third level of when it becomes academic, where it's like nice. okay, all these styles have been made, and everything's kind of solidified, and it's hard to really make any new styles and and then you know then it's all then it becomes all studied all, pretty much obviously there's always new styles to, to to be made but you know a lot of times a lot of those things kind of crystallize and kind of solidify uh, let me it's the same in it's the same in education you know it took took a long time for the electric guitar or for, you know, or for jazz you know to be, to be taught in, in schools and taught in the same way as, as classical instruments so exactly you know for DJing to be at the at the stage it is, it's actually pretty pretty progressive, and it'll only it'll only keep going from here. You know, it'll only gain popularity. So, um, yeah, the only way is up, which is a pretty cool place to be. Yeah, and you know what's funny that is that I have a friend. She went to Juilliard, like you know, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Juilliard is like a you know really um, distinguished school, and she was saying that she actually dropped out because she just she wasn't she didn't like the program. She was playing piano and uh she got really stressed out by it um she was saying that they had just gotten a jazz program recently it was like mm. 15 years ago that she went there maybe 20 years ago when she went there and yep. she, 20 years ago the, their jazz program was brand new and i'm like wow jazz has been around for 100 years exactly man. Exactly. 80 years you know it's like the yeah, fact yeah. that they just got a jazz program so it's like okay you know you know so if it took jazz 80 years to get into like core curriculums of of esteemed institutions is like okay well it's turntables and scratching yeah maybe it'll maybe it'll be it's just clean. Clean. you know that's yeah, for sure. you guys are doing because yeah, you exactly are bypassing yeah. that you know not we're not waiting you know 80 years 70 years for us like oh, okay yeah it's been 70 years everybody's passed away and now it's in schools you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly and it's it's a cool position to be in um just uh yeah um the future the future is bright and i've lots of, just a whole new generation of, of djs with hopefully it's a very un different understanding of what being a dj is i think that's that's what i really like you know um being able to mix being able to scratch as well having just appreciation for all genres and all styles and um and then choosing their own path you know once they have all of those skills thinking mm -hmm. you know okay maybe maybe scratching wasn't for me you know maybe i just i prefer techno or maybe techno isn't for me and I, I love juggling beats you know that's where my creativity yeah. is that's, that's super cool yeah you know it's interesting I, I i personally kind of always looked at it like um kind of like like uh just sciences in general where let's say um you know the physicists are dealing with the smallest little parts and that's kind of like turntablism and then yeah. you have a dj that's in there just fixing it instead it's more like you know um going from physics to uh 
molecular to um, you know getting bigger and bigger scales and, and right. bigger and bigger um, parts of matter where the physicists are dealing with the smallest parts, the molecular science are dealing with bigger, the biologists are dealing dealing with bigger, and then outside of the biology is like the landscape and the ground and geography, then the planet, and then this you know universe. Else. So there's scientists that are dealing with different things and that's how I look at DJing you know because I'm not one of those DJs that's like oh yeah you know he's just pressing play or he's just uh pressing sync I'm like you know to me it's like cool if you're pressing sync whatever because yeah, yeah. It's the same thing is like a biologist being like yeah I just you know press this button on this petri dish or I just do that and it's helping them do whatever that thing is that they're trying to execute whereas yeah. physicists is like yeah they're not they're not able to press that button because they're doing something that's really detailed and, and complex you know so I look at it like maybe like Howard Stern or somebody or a radio DJ as like somebody that's just a host is like the most uh farthest level on the spectrum from turntables and like turntables and as like the most complex and then the least complex would be like not even touching the turntables just being a host and, and just having a playlist like 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 just sure. You know, the, the the traditional radio host, the traditional radio DJ of just being like, okay, we're gonna fill this one on and playing it and then not even mixing it. And then the next level is like getting closer to the spectrum. It's like, okay, now they're actually mixing the the stuff beat wise yeah. back to back like disco DJs, but they're not mixing it. And then the next level is oh now they're overlapping it. And then the next level is, oh they're overlapping it for a long time and using different things. And then the next level is like, oh now they're backspinning and cutting it up and you know trick mixing and so I've always nice. been like that. Yeah, and and just yeah. on, a, on a last note, um, tell me a little bit more about you know uh, I'm very curious about your your particular studies in in uh, in school and and, uh, and the type of compositions that you created and and what they what they uh, pushed you to do in school. Uh, yeah, I guess I um, I guess the kind of natural if you're really into music, yeah, the, the natural kind of progression route through school, you know, takes you and got an academic. Mm -hmm. quite an academic group you know uh, I often wonder like you know it's such a shame that I didn't discover DJing when I was younger you know but that was it was never on the cards you know it was never really an option um because if you're studying music in school you know it's it's mostly it's mostly classical stuff you know it's kind of an in, inescapable you know connection at the moment mm -hmm. um and that's you know perhaps part of the reason why you know its popularity is is drifting you know as, as classical music becomes more and more detached with from what youth are experiencing as, as their kind of music, you know. Um, so, but anyway, yeah, so, so I, you know, I was quite happy to be kind of dragged down that route. I was just like fascinated, with, you know, just like, you know, you describe me a physicist, just in the details of the, of the music and um, learning how to, you know, write bark chorales and um, all the harmonies and the kind of jazz scales, and moods and all that is that kind of, um, it's just the detail of all that really fascinated me. and. Um, and then when you get to university, of course, you like, everything open up, opens up again, and you have so much choice, and um, you learn um, about such a wide variety of things. And it's it's again for me is why music is so is so special. You know, it's it's mm -hmm. it's, it's a subject that um, you know equips people with such a multidisciplinary set of skills. You know, you learn how to you write essays, you discover things about history, but you also present, you're also a leader if you're a conductor, you also work as a team if you're in an ensemble, you know, um, and it just goes on and on, you like the dexterity you, know, you learn, you know, the control of your hands, um, there's just not really a skill set that you don't learn from learning music, you know, I think that's why I loved it, you know, just having that all round, like this subject does everything for me, you know, I can learn to be um, whatever I want if you if you learn with music, um, so yeah, yeah, that was kind of like, so appealing, it's, it's why you know this this just makes so much sense for me you know, the introduction of djing into formal music education you know it's it's bridging that gap it's turning music education into something that kids really want to do and it's brilliant just that djing in some ways is just the perfect thing to do that you know um it's, it's it, you know, like it, yeah it's 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 great and yeah it's 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 kind of it's kind of build and build and like you say this you know having these exams you know it's, it's mm. the first step um that will that will build that will grow over years and um, in 10 years time it'll be a perfectly normal thing and schools will already have decks in them you know it'll be an expected thing and, and it, djing will be an option 
um, just yeah. like guitar is when, when a kid comes to play. Yeah, worldwide, hopefully, yeah. And so yeah, well, exactly. on a more detailed level, I was wondering, like, um, when you were at university, would they be like, okay, look, here's this Art Blakey song. Uh, we want you to transcribe it. Like, do they make you transcribe things? Or um, reading things? Yeah, it's a huge variety. Um, oh. There was... Yeah, I mean, they were they were pretty tricky, like all exams for sure. Um, you know, having to, um, yeah, notate little melodies, um, pick out notes and a chord. You know, uh -huh. that, that kind of stuff was, you know, is, you know, tricky stuff. Um, so yeah, there was there was that theory kind of side of things. Mm. Um, there was kind of written exercises, if you like, like um, yeah. So so bark chorals is the classic thing. You learn how to write a bark choral. Um, and so you're basically writing in the style of, of of a composer, and there are so many rules and things you've got to follow and make sure you're not um, mm -hmm. duplicating this or doubling that kind of thing. Um, and that was, you know, super mathematic in a way. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, but I, then, I have, I have a question. Have you ever seen, uh, because, you know, sometimes, you know, like there's a lot of things that I've always wanted to transcribe, but it's just like, oh, cute, like, Somebody's going super fast and it's too, mm. it's like, let me do a simple one first because that super fast thing is going to be really hard for me to have to rewind that and, and figure out all these 30 second notes and, and stuff. Like, uh, did they ever make you notate like a Coltrane, like, like something just crazy where you had to be like, oh my God, I'm like trying to rewind it a thousand times. Like, you know, did they ever make um, you something really, like really fast, like some really hard bop. Like, not in like not in an exam kind of setting, but I did uh, that on guitar. Or an you know? exam, like homework uh, or yeah. something. Yeah, for sure. Like you know, um, I wouldn't necessarily write it out, but I'd listen to guitar solos and, and work them out myself. And um, and yeah, yeah, write them down too. Um, so yeah, there's there's definitely an element of that. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah. And and the last thing we were to um, because actually, let me show you my guitar. I'm actually teaching, just like how you wish you had been DJing when you were younger. I wish I had been playing guitar when I was in. <laughs> Nice. And I, you know, I just started teaching myself guitar over the past like 10, 15 years, but not even really that much, really more so now than starting to teach myself. But this is like an, um, um, an electric guitar, um, a MIDI guitar, actually. So you see, it has no, it has no, oh, wow. no strings on it. It's just got buttons. Oh, wow. And, and since about 2005, I've been performing with this. Um, <laughs> And uh, where I would use this to trigger samples in Ableton Live, so oh, yeah, so you know, so I could, I could, so yeah, you can see I could, I could use these, and these light up too. These buttons actually light up. Oh, um, wow. It's a Yamaha Easy AG actually, and uh, and actually I have uh, this other one. This is the one I actually. Toured. This is the one I actually toured with. This is oh, the, wow. this and the, and and you see this. I, I would I would have this I would have this control the actual speed like in Ableton you know you can you yeah, can yeah, yeah, yeah. Control, right yeah yeah, yeah 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 so this is really cool so I used to DJ with this I would DJ with the guitar so I would say you know I would have like I would have like uh, I would have like you know like oh this this uh, sample is here and I have an explosion sound here I have a whole <laughs> song here or I just have a loop from a song here or so I could be like, oh, I could I could hit a chord and play three sounds at once, or you know, really I would use this to line up beats where I know I could. Be, and all this was unquantized. I never really did stuff quantized. I, I like yeah. to quantize stuff. And um, but this I was making control the uh, the speed. So if I if I pulled it up, it'd be like you know, it'd be like you know the beats I could, um, you know, in Ableton I would I would connect this patch to the the uh, speed. Yeah, it's MIDI map. So I could control the BPM with this. And then, um, you know, with, and then usually, I mean, I wasn't really using the strings that much, but then, you know, I have all the these, and I used to have a, one with a crossfader on it, <laughs> faders and stuff like that, and just be able to mix stuff. But uh, wow. a lot of like beat juggling, but beat juggling with the guitar. <laughs> because That's awesome. I had seen, uh, you know, Square Pusher, uh, you know, he was always using his MIDI guitar, like most, a lot of his albums, he, he's, using his, or not his bass, he's using his bass, he's got a MIDI bass, and he's just hooking his bass up and playing his synthesizer parts with his bass. Mm. So if he's playing a synth part, he's playing it with a bass. So live, you know, he just hooks his bass up to a bunch of stuff and, and he goes off live. So I started DJing with the, the guitar. That's that awesome. Was, 
two, like 2005. But, uh, I've never seen that before. That's, that's oh, oh you've cool. never seen that before? Yeah, I've seen you some leaks, leaks of that stuff. Yeah, I just put that together myself. I was like, pay, like the back of it, this is what the back looks like. This is what it looked like back in the day. Like, <laughs> wow. Right, so I got a little MIDI patch thing there, you know, and like a USB. So I just had one USB cord coming out of it. And I would just have yeah. that USB cord connected to my laptop. And, uh, you know, and I'd be able to, um, you know, I, I would de have the whole DJ set on the guitar already. So then it was just like, I would just be able to look at live and be like, okay, I'm about to bring this in. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know and, I can, uh, and the cool thing is like being able to control the speed. I could, I could really do a lot, a lot of out, out there stuff with it. Um, um, being able to, um, you know, but, but uh, what I also noticed too, is that with DJing, there's more, the last thing I want to talk about is this. Let's see, do we, are we still recording? Yeah, still recording. Um, just to say how long the time is, but um, yeah, the last thing I want to talk about really is uh, about the infinity of scratches. Um, because what I realized is that, you know, with regular Western notation, or with regular instruments that are based on just like hitting a button or plucking a string or something, it's, it's pretty much uh, pitch and the length of time. Mm. pretty much the general parameters and you know obviously you know if you take all the the um you know the variations of pitches and chords and intervals and then you take all the lengths of time that all those things can happen and you multiply those that's obviously an infinite number of, of permutations but what i realized when i did the matrix any of those permutations that is done let's say a piano hits a hits a sound hits just the um a you know hits the hits a um, even though you can just play A for two seconds long, and it's that long, if you, you can do that with the turntable too, and just let it play and let it A for two seconds, but then you can um, flip it in a million different ways, infinite number of ways. So it's almost like turntablism is an extra uh, multiplier of any type of music, where any anything that you can do in regular music, you can do that with turntablism, but uh, a million different permutations, whether you're reversing it or doing a click in the middle or two clicks in the middle. You know, yeah, yeah. multiply turntablism pretty much times anything. Yeah, true. I guess you can have an infinite number of musical samples and manipulate each sample in an infinite number of ways. Yeah. Exactly, right. Exactly, right. Yeah, that's cool. Pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and the last question is, what hand do you scratch with? I'm curious. Left. Oh, left. left. I'm like on the, yeah. the, the, the your crossfader hand. Yeah, right hand. So I'm right-handed. Okay, so your right, your right hand's on the turntable, on the record. Yeah, okay. yeah, that was that was that was a missed switch tip. Me too, me too. It's tip. interesting because it's a lot like skateboarding, where most people scratch with their left hand. Actually, most people yeah. scratch with their left hand and they use their crossfader with the right hand. I scratch with my right hand, and you know I'm trying to learn the other way, but it's you know it's really hard. But mm. um, you know it's a lot like skateboarding with goofy foot and regular foot. Most people, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, most people put their left foot forward, just like most people scratch with their left, but. But uh, yeah, that's, I'm just curious, you know, because they say that, you know, with skateboarding, I think when uh, people kind of first uh, get on the skateboard, sometimes that's that's what's going to happen. So you said Mr. Switch showed you, so that influenced you. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, right. That's yeah, great. That's, yeah. I, I guess it's the, you know, the crossfader is, especially when you begin with, it's the, it's the trickier movements to get the hang of. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, going with your strong hand first, I guess, probably gives you a bit more confidence when you start out. Okay, and and lastly, um, what what about the future of what you guys are doing and what you're doing? Like, what uh, what do you see as far as the future and implementing these tests and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's it's a bright one. I mean, the big thing that you know we've we've developed, you know, since the pandemic is happening, is this virtual classroom idea. And um, so part of our office now is this awesome wall of screens. And so you can get a teacher in and um, they can present to, you know, 30 students at once. Wow. Um, it's that's awesome sick. tech. It's, that's sick. So at your headquarters, you guys have a whole wall. Like, a, like that's yeah, yeah. sick. That's sick. Uh, and it's the only time. So this kind of tech um, is in Harvard University and it's with, it's with us. So we're the, we're the only other people to have it at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. And so each um, each person in the lesson has their own camera and their own mic. So you can kind of turn to them as the teacher and it, it looks like they're looking at you. you know? wow. um, it's like a Zoom call, but you know, a thousand times better. 
Um, wow, so yeah, <laughs> with real actual screens, that's crazy. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I mean that's 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 huge. You know, being able to teach um, students anywhere in the world, uh, whether they're in school or not in school. You know, that's um, that's really where we want to be. Um, so, yeah. Very cool. Well, it was great having you on the show, man. That was very yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we've got to have you on again. Yeah, for sure. No, I, um, we'll stay in touch, and I'll yeah, yeah. I'll add you with notational questions. Exactly. <laughs> Some updates too about how how the exams are going and stuff like that too. Because I'm really really curious, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Nice one. All right. Well, it was, it was great. It was great seeing you. And do you have any last words? Any shout outs or anything? Yeah, or well, you know, Mr. Switch and uh, DJ Mark One, obviously, um, for for the help with these with these patterns and for kind of constructing the the exam syllabus. Couldn't, couldn't have done it without them for sure. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, you should you know look up uh, the co-founders of the company, so Austin and Scott Smart. Um, they had the the original vision and are constantly pushing things forward. So, um, yeah, shout out the shout out to them too. Nice, 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 great. And and also, you know, I definitely want to get you uh, get you guys a copy of you know TTM ASCII character set where you can just type out the actual patterns. Um, you know, sure thing. Yeah, that'd be absolutely uh, a bit of a lifesaver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It can, it can uh, help and it can help uh, students a lot too. It's funny because the first person to buy one from me uh, was a, a, a ta is a tattoo artist out of France. Last oh, nice. guy out of France, he bought one. So I'm like waiting to see like what he does. Like, you know, like, cause there's already been a couple of TTM tattoos. I've seen at least one, this guy um, named Clay, uh, uh, D. Clay out of uh, um, Italy. He has like a, a tattoo. So I'm just, I'm curious to see how that. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Nice right. one. Yeah, so Great. good talking Thanks, with you. Man. It was very good talking with you. And uh, and I hope everything is is you know safe over there you know because all, with all this you know world uh, crisis stuff going on you know yeah I mean you too man I mean yeah. uh, I'm sure, I'm sure you you know everything going on right now must be quite an experience for you um, yeah, but, yeah, yeah I'd love to chat about that actually and how you know um, your experience of being you know a black man in music you know that would, I'd love to chat to you about that. Oh yeah, yeah, and and I'm gonna have a lot more because uh, in the past the TTM Academy has just been turntablism and the sciences around that. I'm expanding it into uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing um, rap stuff too, like um, breaking down because uh, I created another system called Lyric Transcription Methodology. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna be focusing on rap patterns. And uh, and then also I'm going to be focusing on current events, social studies, you know, poli uh, political science, or you know, more, nice. uh, scientific, uh, statistical analysis and things like that, as well as the stock market too. I have a TTM uh, uh, stocks and uh, a TTM stock market site. If you go to <laughs> Facebook slash TTM stocks, so it's right. used for TTM analysis, TTM stock market analysis. You know, um, I've kind of created a, a stock market theory based on you know, flash notation stuff. So you can check that out. Huh? All right. Sweet. Cool, man. So it's good, good talking with you, man. So, yeah, peace. See you later, man. All right, see you later. Peace. All right, cool. Bye. Bye.